In Washington, they are back to normal. The normal level of dysfunction. The full-blown dysfunction is on pause, at least for the next few months. Republicans and Democrats this week agreed to shut down, to end the shutdown and lift the debt ceiling. Republicans took most of the blame for the shutdown, and Republicans who voted for it are becoming the targets of the Tea Party and the far right. Here's how our Republican lawmakers voted. Senator Rob Portman and Congressman Pat Tiberi and Steve Stivers voted to end the shutdown. Congressman Bob Gibbs and Bill Johnson, who represent more rural districts just east and south of Columbus, voted against the deal. And the day after the vote, the group Americans for Limited Government, a far-right small government group, sent out an email blasting Steve Stivers. It read, in part, by voting to fund it, Stivers now owns Obamacare just as much as if it had been a vote to adopt it in the first place. There is no running away from that fact. Dale Butlin, now I know... It's not like you to, to spike the football after a victory, but most people think that the Republicans lost on this one. But moving forward, what can be done to keep this from happening again from the Democratic perspective? Well, look, everybody, we're going to be in this mess again in another couple of months, uh, right after the Christmas holidays, unless everybody pulls back from the brink. What, what does that mean? Everybody, everybody has to be willing to compromise, and they have to start acting like adults. But I would submit to you that in the Republican House, it's going to require John Boehner and the rest of the so-called moderates to finally stand up to the Tea Party bullies. In that graphic that you just put up, Mike, eight out of the 12 Republican members of Congress from this state voted to continue the shutdown and to default. Because remember, this is default because there was no more time. Eight out of, out of 12 voted to default. Where are the moderates? Why, why are they not standing up to the bullies? Sorry, well, Casey, sorry Casey, I'm not, I'm not, I don't often quote The Onion, the mm -hmm. satirical newspaper, but here's what their headline was. John Boehner hopes to remain the leader of the Republican parties with an S. <laughs> Is there an ounce of truth in that? Well, our party, just like any other party, there's diversity. I mean, in Dale's party, there were a lot of people that didn't want Obamacare. They wanted something where the government ran everything, every penny telling you when and when you could not have any kind of surgery. But I think the president was right. Out of this process, there's no winners, and we really haven't solved anything. All we've done is delay it because the $17 trillion budget deficit is still there, and that's actually small. The bigger problem is the 60 to 80 trillion dollar problem in unfunded promises made by legislators on both sides for all kind of benefits and goodies for people that we don't have money Terry, for. Terry, if you guys are so concerned about budget deficits and spending, how do you justify spending 24 billion dollars on this ridiculous shutdown? Well, the, the shutdown was driven by the Obama people, all worried about the 2014 election, trying to get some partisan advantage. And in fact, your buddy Harry Reid, the House kept passing budgets to keep the, get the government back in operation. Harry Reid, like all the other things, he didn't do anything on the budget. Let's move past the shutdown. Does Steve Stivers, Laura or Bill, does he have anything to worry about from the far right? Fairly new congressman, doesn't have the same... Sinjari, say a Pat Tiberi has. I don't. I don't think so. I think that his district is a little more um, mo moderate than than maybe some of the rural areas that that uh, like Bill Johnson and and he Bob Gibbs. He still make it a challenger, but I think Laura's correct. He uh, he's sort of a nervous Nelly moderate. Sometimes he's kind of ashamed of some of the moderate views he used to take in the state senate. But I think he still has electability. <laughs> and the important thing Steve Stivers has got, he's a hard-working kind of guy that knows the district. He grew up in southern Ohio. And when it all gets down to an election time on members of Congress, they're looking, are you working? Are you staying in touch with people? Uh, the people that are most vulnerable are the people that have been there too long. The bottom line is he doesn't have to worry about a Democrat. Probably. Neither does Pat T. Berry or Bob Gibbs or Bill Johnson. And Joyce Beatty doesn't have to worry about a Republican because of the map that's been drawn. The way they're gerrymandered. And that's, uh, what, that's, that's, that's the that root answers, problem with this. That goes back to the question you asked Dale. Because of the way the districts are gerrymandered, I don't think that things are going to change in a month or two or when the election comes up. Because uh, unless they do something really awful, these people are guaranteed re-election yeah. for life. But one thing that uh, I don't think there will be an agreement as long as Ted Cruz is running the Republican Party in Washington 
and they are determined to try to get rid of Obamacare. That's a deal breaker every time they get together and try to negotiate something. So the conventional wisdom is, as we've just heard around the table, that because of the gerrymandering, Republicans don't really have to worry about elections. I've d looked into this a little bit, and while it is true there are only 17 Republican House members that come from districts carried by President Obama last time, um, it's equally true that there are they have all we need to do all the democrats need to do is take 17 seats right there are roughly 40 seats that are relatively competitive in northern states like new york illinois pennsylvania and so so forth the republican party right now has an approval rating of 24 percent bill McInturf, the republican pollster told them we can't hold the house with an approval rating of 24 percent next year's a long time away but if they keep doing crazy things that could happen and that's the whole game the Democrats have been playing instead of coming to the table and honestly talking about the budget and how we solve it. Right. That's preposterous. Terry, the Democrats aren't going to come to the table and talk about dismantling or delaying Obamacare. That's the deal breaker. What, why should the president come to the table and discuss dismantling or delaying his health care plan when he's been elected two times. Well, but his health care plan, if Ted Cruz hadn't done his stupid little maneuver, we'd be talking about why is Obamacare, the sign-up and the operation of it, why is it yeah, so screwed we up? We can uh, talk about that, that in a minute, Terry. But, error by the, by the Republicans. but and here, here's the point. You are, Terry, your party is perfectly within its rights to try to repeal, delay, or defund Obamacare. What you're not entitled to do is to shut down the government or threaten economic harm to the country if you don't have the votes to get your way.